Get ready, because today we're going to discuss deep point of view and how to get your readers inside your characters' heads as well as their shoes. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. One of my subscribers requested a video on the topic of deep point of view. This is something that gets discussed a lot nowadays in terms of writing. A lot of people want to understand, how do I adopt this style of deep point of view? How do I use it in my stories? How do I narrow that distance between the reader and the character? How do I eliminate that distance? We're going to talk about that today. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give a basic definition of what deep point of view is, just so we're all on the same page. Then I'm going to get into the three key parts of writing in deep point of view, and then we're going to wrap up the video with some examples. But let's start off with a basic definition of what deep point of view is. And you'll see a lot of different definitions out there. For the purpose of this video, we're going to say that deep point of view is a writing style that puts the reader in the character's head head and the, in the character's shoes. And with deep point of view, readers experience the character's emotions, senses, and thoughts with immediacy and intensity. And that's because deep point of view is intimate. Oftentimes, you'll hear it referred to as close third person point of view. And one last thing to keep in mind with deep point of view is that there is no distance between the reader and the character. In other words, there's no standard narrator separating the two. So that's a basic definition, but to truly understand deep point of view and to use it effectively, you need to understand that there are three key things to keep in mind when you are using it. The first thing that distinguishes deep point of view is character perspective, specifically an intimate perspective. We get to filter everything through the POV character. This means that we get to experience the emotions that the character feels as they are feeling it. There's emotional intensity, there's emotional range, meaning that in one minute we may be feeling bummed out along with the character, while in the next minute we may be feeling angry or excited or whatever it may be. We're also filtering sensory details through the point of view character. We experience what the character experiences. And this is where you want to hammer those five senses. If your character is aching and sore, mention that. If your character tastes something in the air, mention it. Now another thing to keep in mind with character perspective is that you're going to be showing rather than telling here. Because we're, we have this intimate, in-the-moment point of view, we can't be telling the audience what's happening. We need to have the character experiencing it right now in real time so that the audience experiences it in real time. Another thing to keep in mind is that the events will be active. They will be in the moment. There's going to be a sense of immediacy. And then one last thing to keep in mind in terms of perspective, you need to limit your narrator's knowledge. And this is an effective way of creating suspense in your stories. The second thing that distinguishes deep point of view is character voice. And specifically character voice in comparison to the standard narrative voice. And in order to make your character voice strong, you need to eliminate filter words. Words like felt, saw, thought. He felt, she saw, he thought, those sort of things can distance the reader from the character. They remind the reader that, okay, this is still a story, this is a third person story being told by a narrator. Another thing to keep in mind with character voice is that you should include character specific values or judgments. These are details that tell us who the character is, where they've come from, what their preferences are. This should leak out into the narration. It should color the narration in a way that is fresh and vivid and exciting. And then one other thing to keep in mind with character voice is that you should fit the language to the character. And this involves things like your character's education, their level of experience in life, their age, their background. Those sorts of things will determine how the character speaks, how their narration voice comes out. And then the third thing to keep in mind when you're building deep point of view is internal dialogue, the character's thoughts. We should be hearing the character's thoughts because we're reading them on the page. We're getting into the character's mind. We're seeing how their mind works and where their ideas take them. And when you are writing character thoughts, remember to make them rich and colorful. Have them colored by their experiences as well as their understanding of the world around them. And then one other thing to keep in mind when you are using internal dialogue, you don't want to overdo it. Remember to come up for air every now and then. Remember, don't forget about physical external events. Have the character reacting and interacting with the world around them. Now I want to take a quick look at the book The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. My subscriber who requested this video, he mentioned Joe Abercrombie's writing style in relation to Deep Point of View, and Joe Abercrombie does do some great work with Deep Point of View, so I'm going to take the opening paragraph from The Blade Itself and pay attention to how Abercrombie uses Deep Point of View. The lapping of water in his ears, that was the first thing. The lapping of water, the rustling of trees, the odd click and twitter of a bird. 
Logan opened his eyes a crack. Light, blurry bright through the leaves. This was death? Then why did it hurt so much? His whole left side was throbbing. He tried to take a proper breath, choked, coughed up water, spat out mud. He groaned, flopped over onto his hands and knees, dragged himself up out of the river, gasping through clenched teeth, rolled onto his back in the moss and slime and rotten sticks at the water's edge. This is a great example because we are firmly grounded in the character's perspective. We hear what he hears. We see what he sees. And we don't even see anything at all until the character opens his eyes a crack. That's a great thing to keep in mind. If your character's eyes are shut, they shouldn't be seeing anything. So when Logan opens his eyes, that's when we see light. And then we we also get the character's internal dialogue. This was death, then why did it hurt so much? And that's a great segue back into what he feels, the sensory details of the pain, the throbbing, the things that he experiences. Great example of using deep point of view. And if you are going to use deep point of view, remember to find a balance between those internal thoughts as well as the external occurrences, those sensory details. You need balance if you are using deep point of view. Now, before I wrap up this video, I want to throw out one last important tip in regards to deep point of view. And it's that if you are using deep point of view, you don't have to use it for 100% of your story. A lot of writers, they hear about deep point of view and they get turned off. They say things like, oh, no way am I ever writing a story in deep point of view, or no way am I ever writing a novel in deep point of view, because that that's just way too much. I would never be able to handle that workload. Way too much expected of me. But the good news is that if you do want to use deep point of view, you can use it strategically. You can save it for key moments in your story. For instance, if a character is in a life and death situation, or if a character is in a highly emotional scene, that might be the best time to use deep point of view. Don't be afraid to experiment with it. Don't be afraid to try out different techniques and see what works and see what makes your story the best that it can be. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what is one book you've read that uses deep point of view? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books. Bad Parts is great if you like small town horror. It's about people trading away their sick and injured body parts in order to get healthy again. And Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. It's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he cannot put it down until he kills six people with it. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. And as always, remember to keep on writing.